Uh, hello everyone, my name is Dr. Asma. I'm a pediatric doctor by background and I'm also an in international medical graduate. Uh, I'm presently working as ST3 Clinical Neurophysiology in London. Uh, the purpose of my video today is briefly to describe how the assessment for ST3, ST4 application works. So in my previous video, I have described how to open a real account and how to apply for the specialty and what uh, um, needs to be done for ST3, ST4 application in pediatrics. So this is almost a continuation of the video. Uh, it would be, uh, I believe it's like really useful. And even if you are not nearly at that stage, uh, this would guide you towards what uh, steps you need to do in order to succeed in your application. So your successful application gives you 50% uh, points uh, in your uh, uh, overall scoring. And then the rest 50% uh, depend on your uh, um, online or virtual interview so um, going going back to how the um, uh, application is scored so uh, all the information is provided in RCPCH uh, web page and also in ST3 uh, recruitment page so I will um, again uh, um, go back and refer to uh, those um, um, guidelines which they have provided with college uh, and uh, the SC3 recruitment um, uh, team has provided and uh, I will take you through uh, what are the evidence which are required for proving uh, your um, application. Uh, so definitely whatever um, uh, evidence that you are claiming you should uh, whatever clinical scale or project you are claiming you should be able to uh, provide the evidence and upload on Oriel system. So coming back to uh, application scoring framework for ST3 and ST4 pediatrics, it has uh, seven domains in which your application would be scored. This comes in supporting uh, documents, uh, your supporting evidence in Oriel application. So first is your additional qualification, which, uh, which is surprisingly the least um, valued or weighted so it has uh, three um, like its total score is three this is additional qualification followed by clinical skills which will be scored out of four then is your qi project audit uh, then is leadership and management uh, fifth is research and academic achievements uh, sixth is teaching relevant to application applicant level and then uh, the last uh, not the least is the statement to provide how strong candidate you are so i will uh, take you through each and every heading and i will explain how you can uh, provide the evidence and if you are still in the preparation mode how you can uh, make that project to be more useful and uh, to score high for you so I am now referring to um, st3recruitment.org.uk. Uh, so this uh, uh, ex um, clearly explains uh, how the um, application scoring is um, uh, is calculated. Uh, I would say that in this time, this ST3, ST4, it does not include presentation and publication. So probably it might be... Uh, you know, uh, a yes deal or a no deal for the people who have uh, who are lagging in this uh, a specific point or uh, who have done more. So probably they might be disappointed. But the rest is uh, mainly the same, which is uh, involved in, which is uh, used in the rest of the specialties. So coming to additional qualification. So additional qualification can be your undergrad quali qualification or pro postgrad. So they are scored from total points of three. So if you have undergrad uh, qualification in terms of if you have intercalated BA, BSc, it would give you uh, uh, three points or you had any um, uh, qualification prior to coming to medical school then as well it can give you points. Uh, I would also like to mention uh, not only in this uh, specific uh, po um, domain but uh, on every um, uh, uh, scale you um, you should write about your um, qualification no matter how uh, small 
or trivial they are i would say that even your written statement it uh, might not be included in scoring but it overall influences assessors who would uh, ultimately interview you and they will go through your application they will read about the statements and information that you have provided so they would just be more aware of what kind of person what kind of doctor you are so even though if you have not done any undergrad or postgrad qualification still go for writing some kind of a statement for yourself i have been uh, prompted about uh, this deficiencies in majority of the applications by the by my um, uh, senior consultant who used to be assessor of the application and uh, the regrets were that if the candidates even uh, though they cannot provide uh, substantial evidence they had not even written they had not even bothered to write anything in the space provided so uh, try uh, try to explain yourself whatever um, uh, kind of evidence it comes to your mind and and place it there so the rest is pro post graduation if it is anything which is uh, uh, worth eight months full time like your msc ma or any non-medical qualification it will give you a total of four marks but this is different because uh, our uh, uh, our application it has maximum of three marks so i would say if you have any uh, relevant post graduation uh, diploma or post graduation certificate which has lasted between one to ten month one to ten month uh, full time it can give you uh, two marks so um, and as uh, the, uh, the application itself uh, explains that MRCPCH is not uh, uh, included in this uh, qualification so other than that, if you have any um, extra qualification, then you're more than welcome to write it up. And again, if you don't have any evidence, please write a statement. And now I will go to uh, clinical skills. So clinical skills as a level one uh, trainee, you should be able to do cannulation, lumbar puncture, um, uh, um, intubation, endotracheal intubation and UVC insertion. So how uh, in my mind, I'm thinking how uh, it could be different least score is how much you have well presented if you are able to do everything in emergency situation and you have been signed off as being as being capable of doing it unsupervised or even supervising other doctors who are new and are under training that uh, this could give you more marks so now coming to quality improvement project so uh, the st3 recruitment also explains about quality improvement project so basically one thing is that you have not been involved in any quality improvement project uh, that would definitely not give you any more any marks but then there is a, a increasing um, evidence of your involvement in a good quality qi project so first is your limited uh, involvement if you were involved in limited number of steps uh, then uh, uh, another level is that if you were uh, I will refer to a document so if you have no projects undertaken it will not give you any marks if you have participated in relevant project it will give you one mark but if you have led and designed a project it will give you greater marks and then if the qual uh, the project was good quality and you were having a regular um, um, input and this uh, project was a regular part of your job uh, so this will give you higher marks and uh, four marks is i believe done when you have uh, been involved and you have participated in a project which has led to substantial change in the services so that is more about the qi so um, i would say while uh, choosing any qi project definitely to start uh, go for any qi project which is available and which could be quickly done but uh, if you are more interested go for the ones which will have higher impact and they are um, led by senior consultants because they would have more idea of what can uh, change uh, the services provision nationally or um, uh, on the trust uh, level so that was about uh, quality improvement projects and the maximum number we can uh, score on this uh, is four now coming to leadership so uh, leadership is something that um, 
uh, although the college has tried to explain it but uh, uh, it is um, it is quite variable how you can represent yourself so if again if you have never been in any leadership role that is uh, that is also quite interesting because even it involves your leadership in a non-medical role so even if you have done anything outside medicine uh, if you have uh, volunteered in any services or um, you know raised awareness for anything or um, um, you know any other uh, serv uh, other managerial jobs you have uh, undertaken you can um, of course uh, mention uh, these and the assessors can then link to how much they would uh, give weight to that role but um, overall how would uh, we explain it is as if you were uh, a representative of uh, if you were involved in rota management or if you were involved in a representation of junior doctors in any forums for example in in the department if you are representing the junior doctors or you were representing at a trust level or if you were representing at a deanery level so it changes uh, as uh, greater your uh, you know um, uh, your area of uh, presentation is uh, the stronger your uh, uh, marks get in that uh, uh, field so um, it's uh, a you can be a bit creative about it you can uh, as i said uh, can in uh, write about your non medical aspects uh, where you have helped or you have made a change or you were uh, you have run a significant service so uh, try to think uh, maybe there were some instances in medical college where you have done something important or during your house job during uh, your stay in your home country or when you have moved in the nhs so keep an eye on that and this leadership is scored out of 4 Uh, then we come to research and academic so uh, in term of research uh, i would refer to uh, so your res research is uh, scored out of 4 so if you uh, had no involvement in the research that would not of course give you any point but my understanding is that if you were able to explain any research pro project with very clear understanding and it was a good quality research project even if you did not have any direct involvement but your understanding and uh, awareness and uh, um, you know idea about that good quality research it might give you some points uh now moving to if you were involved definitely it will give you higher marks and then if the research was um, um you know region region based or nation nationally conducted then it gives you greater marks of course so if you're still in the preparation you can go to your educational supervisors to get further guidance on it uh now coming to teaching teaching uh, is uh, uh being sc being scored as maximum of 5 so um if again if you don't have any experience please try to make a statement and if you have uh, taken uh, if you have taught medical student or other healthcare professionals occasionally then you need uh, some evidence of formal feedback that can give you one mark Uh, then moving to if you want to score higher then if you have provided regular teaching for healthcare professionals or medical students as part of a defined program or course over a period of approximately 3 months or longer then and of course you need to provide an evidence in form of a feedback that will give you another extra marks so um the higher score is if you have worked with local tutors to organize a teaching program a series of session for healthcare professional or medical students on which you were regularly taught over a period of approximately 3 months or longer and you have a formal feedback uh, so uh, the teaching is in form of if you have uh, delivered teaching you have been part of a teaching program and you have organized it as well as if you had any formal course which has given you um, validity of uh, teaching professionals so any kind of online um, a course or if you have done it in your home country you can include that a bit as well so that is about your teaching and then uh, it is scored from the maximum of 5 marks then is statement so um i guess it just comes and flows naturally 
the weightage of your application and your level one trainee competency uh, form as well as how you have written these uh, explained yourself in the supporting evidence and supporting information this actually gives a concrete basis of how strongly you can represent yourself in the statement so try to uh, gather uh, yourself as a good medical practitioner from the gmc basis and then um, color it in with the flavors of whatever is most significant in us in the assessment framework uh take your time i think there is a maximum of 200 words you can describe about yourself so uh, probably make the best use of each and every word and space and um, justify your evidences justify your practices and justify your experience and um, that is it really so i hope uh, that this gives you a thorough guidance of uh, assessment assessment how it is assessed and how you can uh, make your uh, application really um, to, to be scored high thank you very much everyone and um, have a good day uh, bye